خير طيبون حياكم الله ما شاء الله كيف حالك اخي ما شاء الله حياكم الله <تصفيق> I'm ready wherever you are. In the Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduh, Wanastainuh, Wanastaghfiruh, Wanaudu Billahi min Shururi Anfusina, Wasayati Ahmalina. May Yahdi Allahu Hala Mudillala, Wamayudlil Hala Hadiyala. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فإني أحمد الله سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره على ما من به علينا من هذا اللقاء أو هذه اللقاءات الطيبة المباركة نشكره سبحانه وتعالى ونسأله سبحانه وتعالى أن يرزقنا وإياكم العلم النافع المثمر للعمل الصالح والثبات على السنة ثم نشكر الإخوة القائمين على هذا المسجد المبارك مسجد الرزاق على جهودهم الطيبة المباركة وأسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجعل ذلك في ميزان حسناتهم في موازين حسناتهم خالصا لهم يوما نلقى الله سبحانه وتعالى First I praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى and thank him for allowing us once again to meet and the like of this seminars walhamdulillah we thank him سبحانه وتعالى and we ask him to make us from those who benefit because we came here to benefit. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make these talks and lectures and classes of a great benefit for all of us. So therefore we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beneficial knowledge that produces righteous actions. Allahumma anfa'na ma yu'allimuna Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana ya rabbal alameen. Likewise, I would like to thank the community here at, at the Masjid for organizing the like of this seminar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you tremendously and safeguard all of this effort for you on the scales of your good deeds on a day when no wealth and no offspring will be of any benefit. It's a pleasure to be here among the brothers. It's always a, a great pleasure, make us very happy and bring a lot of joy in our hearts to see these beautiful faces, mashallah, that come from far and near. But let us make no mistake, we're here and the main goal of this gathering is to acquire knowledge which help us and should to better our relationship with our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase in a taqwa and a piety and righteousness. And as our the Imam Habibullah, our noble Ustad <coughs> Abdul Razak mentioned, there is time for this and there is time for that. Naam, it is a great opportunity for us to meet one another and we're so happy, alhamdulillah, we'll be looking for that. Days, months, looking to see because whenever you hear a seminar, you, subhanallah, one of the things that come to your mind, I'm going to see this brother, this brother come here, I wonder if this brother is coming from this state or this city or this or that. It's a ni'mah from Allah. But the main goal is for us to learn and to attend. Every lecture we should attend, inshallah ta'ala, take notes, pay attention, inshallah ta'ala. Now, as you know, the book of this Dora is uh, the book of our noble Shaykh al Allam al Walid, Rabi ibn Hadi, Al Madhali Hafidah Allah Ta'ala, Wa Rafara Lahu Wali Walidi, Wali Walidina Min al Muslimina al Muslimat, Wa Iyakum, 
However, inshallah, me personally, I'm going to speak from another book, inshallah ta'ala. And for one reason, one reason, because I wasn't supposed to be here, to be frank with you. I wasn't supposed to be here. I apologize because I was very busy, but then I booked a flight last night just to come and see the brothers. I was like, go, not go, and I'm like, I got to go. Well, that's why I'm here. We need we less, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I didn't get the time to prepare from the book of the Dawra, but I have this book here of our noble Sheikh Al-Alam, Dr. Salih Al-Fawzan, Hafidullah Ta'ala, Muhadarat fil Aqeedah wa Da'wa. I've done these few lessons from it, so that's what I'm going to share with you. And inshallah ta'ala, hopefully that we all get the benefit, inshallah ta'ala. This book here is uh, three volumes called Muhadarat fil Aqeedah wa Da'wa. They are noble Shaykh Al-Alam Dr. Salih bin Fawzan. Al-Fawzan, Habidahu Allah Ta'ala, wa matta'ahu bil sahha wa al-afiyah wa ghafara lahu wa al-walidayh, wa lil-muslimina wa al-muslimat, wa al-mutakallimi wa al-sami'ina wa al-sami'at, ameen. May Allah preserve him and all of the noble scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wa al-Jama'ah. Al-Muhadara al-Thamina wa al-Ishroon, for those who wants to take for reference, and if you have the book and go back to, is the volume 2, al-Juz al-Thani, page 261, the lecture number 28, because they gather here and they compile lectures of this noble sheikh, Baqiyat al-Salaf, al-Allama, Salih al-Fawzan, Habidullah, in Tawheed, there is so many, many, many great lectures in Tawheed, in Aqeedah, and in Da'wah. This lecture here is about al-fiqh al-akbar, the greatest fiqh. قال الشيخ بعد أن حمد الله سبحانه وتعالى وأثنى عليه وصلى وسلم على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أما بعد يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من يرد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين من يرد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين. The Sheikh, after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the salat and the salam upon our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members and companions, he said to proceed and he began by mentioning this famous hadith that is agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, rahimahumullah, on the authority of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, radiyallahu anhumah, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if Allah wants good for a person, will grant them the sound understanding of the deen, sound understanding of the religion. قال معنى هذا أن من علامات إرادة الله سبحانه وتعالى الخير بعبده أن يوفقه للتفقه في دينه. So the meaning of this hadith is that from the signs, and pay attention now, this is the statements of the ulama. These are the statements of those whom Allah سبحانه وتعالى have favored and raised. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah raises many, many degrees. Certain individuals are raised many degrees above others, not because of their nationality or the tribe they come from or, or their color, but rather because of the knowledge. First, because of belief, the sound belief and knowledge. So the shaykh, it says, from the science, that Allah wants good. Khair wants good to his servant. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them tawfiq. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for that individual, that servant of his, to have sound understanding of the religion. To have sound. So the first... so. As we go, you should highlight some key words. Like in here is tawfiq. Whatever you do is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not because of your skills. It's from Allah. The fact that we're here right now, we're here. Alhamdulillah, at this present moment in the house of Allah, sitting, look, you're sitting on the floor. There ain't no couch in here or nothing. And everybody happy, alhamdulillah, right? I hope so serenity, tranquility, right? You can sit like this somewhere else. 
But now you're sitting here, and this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Me and you could be doing something else at this time. There are plenty of people out there running the streets. Me and you, we choose to be here, right? And this is a ni'mah, tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, to be able to acquire and to understand the religion correctly, properly, to have a sound understanding of this deen of al-Islam, that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawfiq. As Shaykh ibn al-Uthaymin rahimahu wa ta'ala, he says, so therefore, if when you see yourself, Allah has made it easy for you, and aided you, and grant you the tawfiq that you're doing good, you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. First thing should come to your mind. Don't you ever say, oh, because I'm this, I'm a student of knowledge, or because I come from this. Say, alhamdulillah, hada min fadlillah aliyya. Whatever you do, this is from the bounty of Allah upon me. And, that, and the second thing you do, ask Allah firmness. Then ask Allah thabat. And for those amongst us, I can only speak about myself who are negligent. We can always turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him, to bring us to the path, alhamdulillah, and to keep us firm upon it. قال وكذلك أن من لم يوفقه الله للتفقه في الدين فإنه لم يريد به خيرا. Likewise, he says, the one who Allah didn't give him the tawfiq to strive, to be diligent, to try, put efforts to learn and to acquire the sound knowledge, sound understanding, this is a person Allah doesn't want good for. Getting the fiqh of the deen, you, you got to put some efforts. Is this going to happen overnight? Is going to happen like that? إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ Knowledge is acquired by learning. Not learning one day or two. Is he going to say, look, I'm going to embark on this path of learning until you die on it. There ain't no three days program and you become an alim. It doesn't work like that. There's no program four or five years and that's it, I'm done. What happened, brother? No, I got it. I got my, my degree. They're not talking about chemistry here. This is the deen of Allah. You're going to continue to learn and you humble yourself and sit with your brothers who they learn from the work of the ulama. And attend the classes to the best of your ability. Make it a priority. I understand some of us, sometimes your schedules may not fit all of the classes, but just make it a priority. I gotta attend those classes. SubhanAllah. There are those that Allah wants good for, there are those Allah didn't want good for them. How do you know? I'm asking, how do you know? How do you know that you are from those people that Allah wants good for or those who Allah does not want good for? How do you know that? Huh? To apply the hadith, right? Naam. Which hadith? This hadith. Aina. Look at how much you, un you understand this deen of Islam. Aina. والله تعالى حث في كتابه الكريم على التفقه في الدين. الله سبحانه وتعالى incite us and encourage us in his book, the Quran, that we should be diligent and take this matter of learning the deen as a serious matter. It is a serious matter, يا أخي. It's not an option whether you learn or stay ignorant. لا. الله سبحانه وتعالى said in Surah the Tawbah, verse 122. وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُوا كَافَةً وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُوا كَافَةً فَلَوْ لَا نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ مِنْهُمْ طَائِفَةٌ لِيَتَفَقَّهُوا فِي الدِّينِ وَلِيُنْذِرُوا قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَحْذَرُونَ The meaning of the ayah, Allah is addressing the believers and those who are going for jihad, the jihad for the sake of Allah. Not the acts of those criminals of ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra and Boko Haram and the Shabab in East Africa and they call that Jihad. That's not Jihad. Now this is the true meaning of Jihad. Still, they should not all leave for Jihad. They should leave a group of them, a group from every 
partly they should leave a group to do what? To study the deen of Allah. They continue to study. To, to acquire the, the fiqh of the deen. So that they can warn their brothers when they come back to them. Warn them and teach them and, 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 and share the knowledge with them. وَذَمَّ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى ذَ ذَمَّ بِالذَّال وَذَمَّ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى الَّذِينَ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despised and considered as blameworthy and those who don't acquire this sound understanding of the deen are to be blamed for that subhanallah you're not blamed for something good when you blame for something, you know that something that is not right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the hypocrites, He said, but the hypocrites don't have no fiqh. They don't understand. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى فِي سُرَةِ النِّسَاءِ فَمَا لِهَا أُولَاءِ الْقَوْمِ لَا يَكَادُونَ يَفْقَهُونَ حَدِيثًا What is the matter of such individuals and people? They have no understanding they do not understand what is being narrated to them. قال فالذي لا يتفقه في دين الله ولا يهتم بذلك ولا يسعى لطلب العلم معناه أنه إنسان محروم من الخير سبحان الله هذا محروم من الخير The Sheikh Salih Al-Fawdani says So therefore the one who does not exert efforts to try to learn and acquire this, have sound understanding of the deen of Allah shows no ihtimam, no zeal, no diligence whatsoever. A person who does not put efforts, forward efforts to acquire the deen and the knowledge, this person, subhanAllah, has, is depriving himself from good. This person, he is depriving himself from good. لأنه لا يمكن للإنسان أن يعبد الله سبحانه وتعالى حق عبادته على الوجه الذي يرضاه إلا إذا تفقه في دينه وأدى العبادة على الوجه الذي شرعه الله سبحانه وتعالى He said because Sheikh now to highlight how important this matter here He says because it is impossible for the person to worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى correctly upon the way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unless and until that person acquire the sound understanding in the deen. And therefore, through that, the person will carry out the acts of worship according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated, not just go out there and do it your way. Any act of worship, you're not just going to do it your way or do it the way of certain individuals or just tag along whatever they do. You're wrong, I'm only one of the people. Now you have to do it the right way. What is the right way? The way that is legislated for us. قَالَ وَلَا يُمْكِنُ الْإِنسَانَ أَنْ يُؤَدِّيَ الْعِبَادَ عَلَى الْوَجْهِ الْمَشْرُوعِ إِلَّا إِذَا تَفَقَّهَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلِّ Sheikh is telling us that's impossible for any person to fulfill these acts of worship correctly unless and until that person acquire the sound knowledge of the deen of Allah. You got to have knowledge with sound understanding, not just memorize. You got to understand what is said to you as understood by the best of the people, the Salaf of Salih, the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and those who follow them upon that good. That's why the ulama, they says, Al-Quran was sunnah ala fahmi salaf al-ummah, salaf al-salih. That's why this qaid is very important that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on what's in the book of Allah and the sound sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa but with the sound understanding, the understanding of the salaf al-salih. Ridwan Allahi alayhim. Qala wal-ladhi ya'malu wa ya'budu Allah min ghayri fiqhin لا يكون عمله مؤسسا على أساس صحيح فقد يكون كله أو أكثره ضلالا so the reality is the one who perform actions does acts of worship the one who worship Allah does a person he is worshiping Allah but without acquiring the fiqh just worship let's do this and he do it never ask wait a minute how, how are we supposed to do it 
how are we supposed to do it correctly? We can't just go. Otherwise, whenever somebody comes and say, okay, uh, move around, brothers, make a circle, we're going to start saying La ilaha illallah together. Is saying La ilaha illallah, I'm asking you now. Is saying La, if someone come and call us and say, in the masjid, now look, we're not in a market, we're in a masjid. And he said, say La ilaha illallah. Is this is so far a good thing or a bad thing? Huh? All of you? It's a good thing, right? If someone come and say, Yaqi, say La ilaha illallah. It's a good thing. But then when that person say, wait a minute, guys, before you say anything, make a circle, hold hands, turn off the light, <laughs> and then start saying, Allah, 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 not la ilaha illallah. Allah, 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 Allah. And then he goes to who, 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 who. Would you do it? Why not? Remember, you're in the masjid. These are Muslims holding hands. No kafir, nothing. No women, just brothers. And they're not telling you to say something. They're telling you, say, La ilaha illallah. You still don't do it, right? Why not? Because they are not from your country? You look around and say, you're not even by my country, man. Why not, Akmal? Huh? They are not from the sunnah. That act, ahsant, because that act, naam? Ahsant, ahsant. How old are you again? Nine? Eight, okay. Mashallah. Sorry, man. Look, eight years old. He said it's not from the sunnah. Or at least, if you don't know sunnah or not, at least one question comes to your mind. Whenever somebody calls you to do something, tell them, la ba's, jazakum Allah khairan. Sounds a good thing, but is this from the sunnah? What answer they may come up with when you ask someone, call you to do something, and you say, you don't have to be nice, too. You say to them, subhanAllah, it looks like we're in a masjid. Do this. But one question, is this is from the sunnah? What answer do you think they come up with? Number one, what? Yes, it is from the sunnah. Number two, what is it? They're going to say yes. When you ask them, is this thing that you're calling me to from the sunnah? They can say, Yes, it is from the sunnah. Or they can say what? No, no it's not from the sunnah. Or they can say? Allahu A'lam. I know Shaykh, man. They can say, yes, it's from the sunnah. They can say, no, it's not from the sunnah. Or they can say what? Allahu A'lam. Or they can say what? Let's just stick to the tree. We'll stick to this tree, inshallah. All right? So if they tell you, yes, it is from the sunnah, that's it, you say, Allahu Akbar, get down, brother, just waste no time. What do you say? Huh? What is the dalil? Ahsan, that's fine. <laughs> but how do you say that? What is the dalil? Nicely, ya khuan. Allah. fi dhalika dalil? Is there any dalil, inshallah, I just want to learn. They say, no, I'm going to Dalil. Because sometimes, do you know all the sunnah? All right. But if somebody come and tell you something, ask him for the Dalil. If they have the Dalil, alhamdulillah. The next thing you say, هل هذا على فهم السلف? Is how the Sahaba understood it and apply it? نعم يا أخي. قال الإمام محمد. قال البيهقي. قال كذا. شيخ سنة مرتيمية. شيخ بن باد. Alhamdulillah. But if they say, no, it's not from the sunnah. What do you do now? Smack them in the head. <laughs> Tell them, get out of here, you all mubtadi'ah. See, we have to learn. This is all from the fiqh of the deen. This is all from acquiring the fiqh of deen, how you deal with the people, how you, you, you make the right decisions and all of that. Now, now you will tell them, subhanAllah, we as Muslims, we follow the sunnah. We don't follow anything else. And then if somebody don't know Allah was good for it, it's a Allah, you're right, this is the deen of Allah. And this deen of Allah kamil, will Allah? Huh? The deen of Allah is complete or not? Yeah, it's completed. Shaykh Muhammad Aman, rahimahullah ta'ala, in the explanation of Tarat Usul, he says, Wal kamilu la yaqbalu ziyada. Something that is perfect doesn't accept no addition whatsoever. It's complete. Something that is complete, can you squeeze something? You can squeeze nothing, brother. They say, oh, it's complete. Likewise, this is the deen of Allah. 
is complete. As for it, they tell you don't know, tell you more, subhanAllah, you should learn. And you share with them some of the texts from the Quran that highlight the dangers of speaking and deen of Allah without knowledge. Imam al-Bukhari mentioned in his book, in Sahih, a chapter, Al-Ilmu Qabla Al-Qawli Wal-Amal, Knowledge Precedes Statements and Actions. Wahakada, because sometimes people, they just like following. Aina am barakallahu feekum. Ala yin fa attafaquhu fi al-deen fihi al-khayr. The Shaykh says, any act of worship that is not based on sound understanding, you have no benefit whatsoever for the person, but rather it will be dalal. If it's not all of it, most of it will be nothing but misguidance. Well, yeah, the billah. قال من هنا نعرف أهمية التفقه في دين الله سبحانه وتعالى وأنه أمر عظيم. Based on this, he said we should know how important for us to acquire the sound understanding of the deen, the fiqh of the deen. But once again, the Ikhwan is going to take some efforts. It ain't going to like just happen. We're chilling and sitting and show up whenever we want to the classes and and there is Talat al-Usul or Kitab al-Tawheed and, and there is like class number 47. I already made two classes. It's not going to happen like that. You have to come and make it priority. I have to attend this class. To give you an example, you will never graduate from any school or any field or any subject if you don't attend the school right around. You just can't. You're not going to graduate if you, you want, uh, the whole year you show up twice or three times. But nobody in his right mind do that. People, they do attend and they go try to get uh, help in here. Man, listen, man, I don't got this chemistry problem here, this math problem, I don't understand it. Why don't we do the same thing? We brothers in the community, we we'll make sure we encourage one another. Akhi, kitab tawheed, dars, gotta be here. That's what brothers for, to advise one another. To invite one another to that which is khair. But we do it with the husna. We do it with a nice way. If somebody didn't make it, alhamdulillah, here is my notes. I can share them with you. If the class is recorded, send him, alhamdulillah, the, the link. And we invite to that which is khair. Naam. So he said, a matter like this is important. It's a great matter indeed. Just to be from those people who put forward efforts and they are diligent to learn the deen of Allah. مطلوب من كل مسلم أن يتفقه في دين الله ولا يبقى على جهل وعلى خطأ ولا يدري كيف يعبد الله عز وجل وكيف يؤدي ما افترضه الله عليه. So the, the, the believer should not remain ignorant upon ignorance upon error thinking that he's got it he's got it it's not about what you think you got it or not when you want to find out on yom al qiyamah whether you were right or wrong that you want to find out now okay you don't want to just do things you don't even know if it's right or not if you're doing it according to allah or not, what's pleasing to allah or not you don't want to do that كذلك تحتاج so you need the sound understanding so that you carry out what Allah has made obligatory upon you in the way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not enough to just like, wow, man, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, whatever I can. Yes, that's true. That's a good statement because Allah tells us, fear Allah to the best of your ability. But doesn't mean just cherry picking and pick whatever you want and say, oh, that's what Allah said. No, you're going to understand the ayah too. The ayah, it means that you have to do it the right way. But if you have a valid excuse that you cannot do it the way, well, there is an easier way for you. That is legislated. You don't come up with your own ways. For example, salat. Do you have a choice whether to pray standing or pray sitting? Or laying down? Do we? You have a choice. It's an option. No, no, no. <laughs> Did they say any circumstances? I'm going to mention that later on. But just like if somebody comes to you and say, oh, you know the salat, that is uh, one of the pillars of Islam, right? Right? You got an option. Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, whatever, Nawafil, Sunnah. Pray, standing, sitting, laying down, don't pray, is all the same. 
leave off, don't pray. It's going to confuse you. First of all, who can raise his hand? Nobody can raise his hand. I can't hear. I remember, I felt like you have had it. Hayyak Allah, Barak Allah, good to see you, man. I love you too, man. Ahabbak aladhi ahababtani lahu. All right. Who can answer this question? Raise his hand. Why are you not raising your hands? There you go, mashallah. Zakallah khair, huh? Mashallah. Kayfa haluk, akhi? How are you? What's your name? Ibrahim. Where are you from, Ibrahim? Richmond, Virginia. Ahiyak Allah khair, Ibrahim. Zakallah khair. All right. What is the first pillar of a salat? Salat has pillars, right? And has conditions. And has wajibat. And has sunan. That's what we learn. Or Ibrahim from Richmond, he's going to answer. What is the first pillar of a salat, Ibrahim? Standing if you're able. Standing if you're able. Uh-huh. That's the correct, right? Anybody have another? Who says no? I got you, brother. You... You hold on to that position or you want to change your mind? Hey, don't talk to the brother next to you now. Listen, listen. You said no. He didn't say no, no. Don't get him involved now. You all agree with the brother? He's right, by the way. He's right. You agree with him? Okay. So, yes. Standing, if able, but there is something missing. Naam? Intention? Oh boy. Oh no. Intention is not a pillar, it's a condition. One thing we should not mix the conditions and the pillars and the wajibat and sunan. We should, every one of them in a basket. You have this basket of apples, this one of eggs, this one, I don't know what. So you don't mix them together. So we have the conditions, we have the pillars, and we have the wajibat. So don't uh, mix them. So, I'm looking for something. Standing, if able. Naam. Ahsant. In the obligatory prayers. Qala al-Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan fil mulakhas al-Fiqhi. The first, Sheikh Fawzan, he said in mulakhas al-Fiqhi, he said the first pillar is what? Al-Wuqufu ma'a al-Qudra fi salat al-Farida. Standing, if able, in the obligatory prayers. So now if somebody cannot stand, what do we say to him? Stand! Run, brother. Be a man. Man is hurt. Stand, brother. Ain't no game. You can't say stuff like that. Man. Stand. No, then you tell them, look, he cannot stand. Sit. What if you see a brother... In Asr Maghrib, laying down and praying. What do you do? Laying down. He's just like he was sitting and then he lay down. Huh? Tell him to get up. Yeah. Huh? Ask them. Ask him what? Why are you laying down? <laughs> Ahsan, that's, that's the first thing that should come to your mind. SubhanAllah, knowledge is, is beautiful. The first thing will come to your mind once you have understanding of the ibadah. The first thing should come to my mind, my brother is hurt. He cannot even sit. And I will make dua for him in my sujood. But if it's not the case, and I don't have no clue what's going on, I'm going like, who is this Mubtadiyah next to me? I may even try to change my position. No, no, it's not the case, Ya Khwan. If somebody cannot stand, then they sit. That's the advice of the Prophet ﷺ to who? Who's the companion? Imran ibn Hussein. The ulama, they mention, he kana bihi bawasir. He has him words. And he came to the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ, that's what he advised him. Salli qa'iman. Pray standing. If you cannot qa'idan, 
If you cannot sit in aw ala jan, if you cannot even, sometimes you can, a person cannot even sit, then he can pray on his side. How he pray, what he, how he does it, that's another, that's another subject, okay? I don't want to go far away from the topic here. That was just an example. Likewise, the hajj. Some people, they go to hajj and go back, they have no clue what to make hajj, tawaf, not. They don't know. You have to learn. You have to. Likewise, not just in salat and hajj and fasting. Likewise, in marriage, for example. How you deal with your wife, how she deal with you. Based on what? Huh? Same thing. What Allah has legislated for you in that matter. And you are obliged to do that. You don't just be nice to her whenever you feel like you're in a good mood. Allah Akbar, everybody's happy in the house. You're in a bad mood. May Allah have mercy on them. <laughs> you, you have something bad at work. MashaAllah, all of them, they're going to have a taste of it. No, it doesn't matter what happened to you, ya akhi. Anta abdullah. You're supposed to carry out everything according to what's pleasing to Allah, what's legislated by Allah. Doesn't matter what you're going through in your life, you still pray the way Allah commanded you to pray. Right or wrong? Okay, when you're so mad and upset, the way you just pray three rak'at of asr and say, oh, it's okay, I'm mad, akhi. No, you pray four. Right? So what about like, treating people like that? You come to the masjid, you still have to treat your brothers with respect, with love, with kindness. Whatever happened to you at work, on the street, that's, that's out there. Likewise in a house, the way you treat the husband treats his wife and the wife treats her husband and the like, according to what's pleasing to Allah. Not according to your emotions. Aina am barakallahu feekum. Qalfa alladhi la yatafaqahu fi al-deen la yumkina an yu'ati ashab al-huquq huquqahum before that he said, نعم, تحتاج إلى الفقه في الدين في علاقاتك بأهلك وأولادك وجيرانك وأقاربك وإخوانك. You need sound understanding of the religion when you deal with, the, with, with your family, your children, your neighbors, your family members, your brothers in the community. How are you going to deal with them? Based on what? See, that's the problem. Some of us, we just like deal with the certain brothers in one level. The other ones, like that, we don't know who they are. Why? Well, he's not my man. Why, why are you always nice to this person? You overlook his mistakes. You forgive him in no time. Why not the other one? They have no answer. They're not going to bring you an answer from the deen of Allah. So therefore, you should know that it's because of my deficiencies. I can only speak about myself. The way we treat one another has nothing to do with the deen. Unless if we learn the deen, yes, this brother here, he did this to me, he said this about me, but I'm still, I'm a servant of Allah. And this I'm going to deal with him in a way that Allah has commanded me. Cannot justify, justify what the bad he's doing to me, but another bad, no, we can't do that. Now we have two brothers that we have to take care of them. Likewise in the house, Ikhwan, whatever happened, you're like, listen, I'm a servant of Allah. I'm going to stand in front of Allah on Yom Al-Qiyamah. Yes, she said this, she did this, but I have to do what is right. I have to do what is right. Likewise, you have a business partner with somebody, and they may, you think they did this or did that, that you don't approve of. You're going to say, oh, I don't know what. They're supposed to think about what they're doing. May I always have to treat them and deal with them in a way that is legislated. If you don't know, and that's okay, that's not a defect itself. You're not perfect. Al-Kamalu Aziz. If you don't know something, don't act until you learn. And this way, Wallahi, you will see, alhamdulillah, great impact in our lives, in, in the community, in the society, in the masjid, in our homes, and the like. قال فالذي لا يتفقه في الدين لا يمكن أن يعطي أصحاب الحقوق حقوقهم على الوجه المطلوب ابتداء من حق الله سبحانه وتعالى ثم حقوق العباد The Sheikh said that is because the one who does not have the sound understanding of the deen and we once again you gotta make efforts it doesn't come overnight like that 
You got to make efforts. You got to learn. Humble yourself. And you should know it's a long way. A long way. But alhamdulillah, just be happy that Allah put you on the first step. The longest journey starts with one step, brothers. That's how we start. But one step after the other, after the other, and you continue, alhamdulillah, you're going to make it somewhere. Of course, with the ikhlas. You got to always examine your intention. Why you're learning? Why you're attending this class? Why you're carrying these books? Why you attend these seminars? Intentions is very important. Ikhlas and niyya lillah. And then you have to turn to Allah and beg Allah in your sujood. Oh Allah, open my heart for this deen. Oh Allah, make me from those who are you once good for them. And then you apply. Hey naam. Knowledge mandates actions. We don't just learn. We still do things our way. Now we have to change the way we do things. We have to rectify our affairs and our matters. Ainam. So the Sheikh said, the one who does not acquire the son and the son of the deen, that's impossible for that person to fulfill the rights that Allah has made obligatory upon him. It, upon the way that Allah legislated for him. Starting with the right of Allah, الذي هو أعدم الحقوق. Starting from the right of Allah, that there is the greatest of all rights. And by the way, there is a, a little book that, that was translated. It's like a brown book, small book. And uh, it is by Sheikh Munar the in The innate rights according to Islamic law, if I'm not mistaken. You, you've heard about that little book? Huh? Great book. Small little book. It's out. Aina. A great book. The innate rights according to Islamic law. He mentioned number one, what? The right of Allah. Then the right of the Messenger. Then the right of parents. Then the rights of children. Then the rights of spouses. Great book. Very small. But subhanallah. This is one of the greatest of the rights. A'adam al-huquq, haqq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haqq Allah al-ibad. The greatest of all rights is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his servants. Wa ma huwa haqq Allah al-ibad? What is the right of Allah upon his servants? Naam? Ay naam, an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bihi shay'a aw ahada. That's the right of Allah, that he should be worshipped. Alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he alone deserves to be worshipped as an Imam, uh, Shaykh al Islam Muhammad Abdul Wahab. He says, Allah, Allah, he alone deserves to be worshipped. Anyone who is worshipped besides Allah is worshipped in falsehood. Falsehood. Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to stop here. I don't know if I have another time I'm going to meet with you, brothers. Inshallah. I leave that for my brother and our stud, Abdul Razak. We're going to stop here. We have like seven, eight minutes. I usually stop my classes like that, seven, ten minutes, for one reason, to review. And to listen to you, brothers, now you can give me some benefits. Some benefits from this class, okay? Are you? Now, what are some of the benefits you can share with us, inshallah ta'ala? Now, Makhi. What's your name? Bilal from? Ahsan, I just want to, some of the brothers, I know you, but I just want to saw the other brothers, because we're a family, we need to get to know each other, okay? You know the brother sitting next to your name? You know his name? You know his name? Oh, how is that? You know each other from before. What's his name? And what's his name? Abdul Rahim, Abdul Hakim, yeah. I'm Abdul Hakim too, because we're all Abdul Hakim, but that's the real name? All right. <laughs> Even if you're Ibrahim, but you're still Abdul Hakim. Right or wrong? Huh? There you go. That's Bilal, right? From Chester. Now, tfaddal, akhi. Ahsant. Without the sound understanding of the religion, you're not going to be able to fulfill the rights that Allah has made obligatory upon you. Now. Now, akhi. Your name? Khalil, no, I'm not. I found it a great benefit when you use the example of uh, being diligent in the future knowledge and how you didn't expect to graduate from school, but it's going on. Ah,
احسنت هاي نعم احسن بين diligent and attend the classes in the masjid you want this you're going to say to yourself this is it actually this is better than any classes in any university this class that you learn the deen of allah had a khayru ma tushrafu fihi lawqat this is the best thing you can do with your time being in the masjid in the classes of knowledge learning the deen of allah now i'm learning math and physics and all that that's a good thing but this is the best now What's your name? Khalid. Naam Khalid. Asman, you're the speaker now. Ahsan, you mentioned the hadith, right Khalid? Ahsan, man yuridi allahu bi khairan yafaqihu fi al-deen. Who narrated the hadith and who collected it? You wrote it down? Who? أي نعم معاوية عند الشيخين أي نعم نعم إخوان تفضل what's your name يوسف you're uh, ten or nine or eleven you're eleven so I said that الحمد لله good the importance of jihad no doubt but the proper jihad according to what Allah legislated to us not the ج... so fake called jihad of the khawarij okay Say that again. Ahsant. Aina. Barakallahu feek. Naam akhi. Ahsant, what Abdul Rahman shared with us as Tawfiq is from Allah. We're supposed to take the means. Tawfiq from Allah doesn't mean sit home and then oh, one day you're going to be Talib Ilm and you start giving fatwa now. No, you have to make efforts. You got to follow the means, but don't rely on the means. Don't depend on the means. Say, oh, listen, man, I've been studying in this country and this and that for years. I, I got it. Why you got it, brother? Oh, because I've been out there, man, for years. It doesn't work like that. Tawfiq is from Allah. There are people that study for years, but they're mubtadi'ah. They are ru'us al-mubtadi'ah. They study with Sheikh bin Baz, Sheikh Uthaymin, Sheikh Rabi'ah, Sheikh Al-Bani, Sheikh Fawzan, Sheikh, Sheikh. They're mubtadi'ah now. What are you going to do? Some of the khawarij, they study under the, 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 the hand of some of the sahaba. Aina. So what are you going to do now? Tawfiq is from Allah. Now follow the means. Don't just sit back and say, if Allah wants it for me, I'm going to be alim one day. You cannot even be an electrician, man, if you have that mentality like that. You just can't. You can't even flip a burger if you have that mentality. I'm just going to sit back one day if Allah wants it for me. I'm going to be the imam. Doesn't work like that. Follow means. But you, but you shouldn't like a, from the day one. You didn't even put one, one foot in the knowledge. I'm going to be alim one day. I'm going to be talib ilm three years from now. <coughs> just relax, man. Relax. It's not even guarantee for you that you're going to be, you see tomorrow. Because death is certain, tomorrow is not. You just have to relax and say, Oh Allah, turn to Allah with sincere hearts. Allah, I want to learn. Oh Ya Rabbil Alameen. I want to learn your religion. Say that in a sujood. Get up at night and ask Allah. Big Allah, don't big the, the human. I forgot. I supposed to listen to the, uh, to the, to the benefits. Sorry. Now, nah. another benefit. Tfadl. Okay, Muhammad. Ahsant. Whatever you do, make sure. Look, take it from nine years old. You're nine? How old? Huh? Thirteen. Allahumma barik. MashaAllah. All right, we'll take it from a thirteen years old. Allah Akbar. He says, whatever you do, make sure. Look, this is very important. Make sure. 
that he do it in according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Naam. You gotta speak up, brother. Abdul Wahid, naam, akhi. Anything that you do that is not based on sound knowledge is not going to benefit you and it's going to cause a person to go astray. And the danger of that, that person thinks that he's doing is right. Naam, akhi. Ahsant. Aynam. Ahlu sunnati arhamu nasi bil khalq. Ahlu sunnah, they're supposed to be the most merciful to the people, especially the layman people. The innovators, that's another topic. But when you see in a community, you live around people that you know, he's no alim, he's no da'i, he has no YouTube clips, he's just a regular guy. Be nice to him. Talk to them nicely, kindly. And explain to them, call them to the sunnah. Aina barakallahu feekum. Naam. Ah, <laughs> if you now this is a very important point as well if he if any one of us find himself mashallah given priority to learning and putting efforts thank allah for that don't let the shaitan come to you and fool you and become arrogant and now you're not going to give salam to those who didn't come to the class he don't even attend the classes man i don't know why he's here for you have no clue, no reason. Why didn't he attend the class? Maybe he's busy. Maybe he was sick. Maybe he was doing something else that is important too. He's taking care of his grandmother. You don't know. Or maybe that brother, that's me, for example. I can only speak about myself. Maybe I'm, I'm ignorant. I'm, del I'm ne negligent. But still you have to come and invite me. Say, Akhi, mashallah, we know each other for a long time, man. This is, we have... Tawasaw bil sabr, tawasaw bil haq. We should advise one another with good. Akhi, if you have time, please attend the class of Arabic, attend the class of Quran, attend the class of this. Be in the masjid, alhamdulillah, this is the best place. How could it? That's all you do. I apologize, we passed our time. Zakum la khair, barakallahu fikum. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala muhammad ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wa sallam wa taslim al kathira. Ayyakum Allah. Ahlan, assalamu alaikum. How you been, man? Good to see you. How you been? Give answer. You're here?